Well, it is local body elections. They are important. And, of course, it's the great virtue signal to say you must get out and vote in the local body elections. We've seen some really interesting trends, though, this uh, local body election season, and one of them is, I, I think, the quite shameful outing in mainstream media of people who simply have views that aren't mainstream, like anti-vaxxers or the vaccine hesitant or people who are members of VFF. And you've seen a news media act with complete bias and fundamentally saying, read between the lines, these people are nutters, they shouldn't be allowed to stand. But we have seen with a white supremacist standing on a school board and getting only 25 votes in Christchurch, we do not need the amateur Nazi hunters of our mainstream media for voters in New Zealand to make good decisions about who they vote for. And uh, that is not to say that we should not analyse overall the sort of people who are standing for local bodies and ask some questions of them. In a functioning democracy, that's what we much, must do. So I was very interested, therefore, to see an organisation I've got some time for, the Free Speech Union, conducting a survey of local body candidates, not to find out if they're Nazis or white supremacists or have ever looked sideways at Mein Kampf or not agreed with the Labor government, but simply to find out their attitude to free speech. And joining us now from the uh, Free Speech Union is Jonathan Ayling. Jonathan, take us back to the start of this. What is the purpose? How does the survey you've done run? What are you looking for? What were you looking for? Morning, Sean. Well, I, I think you've done a very good overview exactly of the situation at play here. And, and I'll go back to the very uh, first comment you made there that saying get out to vote in the local body elections is the ultimate virtue signaling. You know, I, I think it is a bit of a cliche, perhaps, but uh, I think it is also very, very important that uh, New Zealanders do engage with this ability to express themselves and to, to raise their free speech. And so that's why we have engaged in this process. I think a lot of people don't know much about local government. They don't know much about their candidates. And so that's why we wanted to not only say get out and vote, but actually give them a way to make an informed decision. And rather than us putting our perspective or, or our lens over any of the candidates, we let them represent themselves in their own terms. So ultimately, why have we done this? We believe Kiwis deserve to know whether their political representatives will respect uh, their right to free speech or, or won't. And in the spirit of free speech, we put these questions to the candidates themselves. And they'll come back to us. And we've released a, a council candidates report there. It's over 70 pages long where uh, hundreds of candidates from across the country have come back to us told us where they stand on free speech issues and, and we're providing that to our supporters to help them have their say. Yeah, Jonathan, what sort of response rate did you get from candidates, percentage-wise? Uh, I'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, what the percentage is, um, but, but we're, you know, we've got hundreds there. Um, it, 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 certainly there were, uh, there's a portion, I, I would say a, a mildly significant portion that didn't reply, we'll, we'll be honest. But... Um, from our perspective, you've got a really good indication of those that will stand up for free speech. I don't actually think not replying uh, is, is failing to get their opinion. That is their opinion in itself. Yeah, so okay. Was there, could you, was there a, a, a trend in those that didn't uh, uh, reply were candidates of a certain political persuasion or part of the spectrum less or more likely to reply to your survey? Oh, of course, and and and, and well, well the, I, I don't know. Of course, tell me which <laughs> which part of the political spectrum is less into engaging on the issue of free speech. The, those that have uh, more centrist tendencies and, and, and come from uh, political parties that are advancing uh, policies in that space uh, it definitely appear to to be less inclined. So, Jonathan, to parties of the left, Green and Labour aligned candidates, right? Th that, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so they appear to be less into free speech or engaging in questions around free speech than centrist or maybe right-wing candidates if we're going to use those rather blunt um, descriptors. That, that, that's absolutely right. It, it does appear that those who are associated with the Labour Party in, in this election are less inclined to respond or when they do respond are more inclined to be very open about their willingness to express centrist tendencies, which I find ironic, actually, Sean, because... 
you and I both know it's actually the left that historically has often been far more pro-free speech. It's often been progressives who have advanced their cause yeah. through provoking discussion and debate. So yeah. in, in, in this time frame, you know, and in this election, we, we may see the right emerging as, as what we appear to be champions of free speech. But there's an irony, irony in that because uh, free speech has actually been opposed more by the right than the left historically. Okay. Can we geographically look at the responses, not necessarily the substantive responses, but the number of responses, and say, is there a geographical difference in terms of how people, uh, candidates, are likely to respond or to engage in issues of free speech? Yes, and, and, and again, uh, the, these responses are confirming a lot of our suspicions here. When you look at, 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 at certain um, cities, for example, Dunedin, uh, with with the with the Green MP there, with um, Andrew uh, Aaron Hawkins there, who who is uh, very known for his centrist tendencies, uh, we see that there are an associated cohort of councillors there that uh, that probably share those perspective. Palmerston North City Council is another one. I feel for any of your listeners who live in Palmerston North City Council, there are a few good candidates there, but a number there that even re in replying to, to our survey were just very open about their support for hate speech laws, their support for requirements that speech be uh, unoffensive, and uh, and you and I both know that that to, for speech that is unoffensive is to... Is to so you're saying Palmerston North was a hotbed of refusal to engage on free speech. See, I'm going to tell you, Jonathan, I know precisely why that is. It is a university sand, uh, town. Yes. It is Massey University town. And Massey University <laughs> is one of the most anti-free speech organisations in this country. Well, I have good news for you in that regard. Uh, so all just two weeks ago, I sat down with Jan Thomas, the Vice Chancellor of Matthew University, and they are releasing a uh, free speech policy after the free speech ranking that the Free Speech Union put out uh, a few months ago. And so hopefully they're taking some positive steps there. We've been able to work with them on that. We haven't seen the final product yet, but, but hopefully this is showing where the Free Speech Union and advocates for free speech can be involved in, in pushing these arguments for organisations like Massey, which in the past has been quite Censorious. But I think you're right. Palmerston North is a, a city with a younger population, and unfortunately, you and I both know that that uh, you know my generation, individuals in their late twenties, early thirties, and younger, they um they haven't bought in to the argument around free speech in the way that you know a generation above or two might have, and and that's really the concern. is is not necessarily just the local election or or a general election today, but where are we going to be having this argument? in 10 years, in 20 years, when people truly believe that if you disagree with someone, you must use the power of the state to silence them. I think that does not bode well for our democracy in the long term. Yeah, and we've got to get, I think we have to get younger people engaged in the idea that this is once lost, this is a very, very uh, difficult thing uh, to crawl back. Um, because right. once free speech goes, you cannot talk about the fact that you've lost free speech if you've lost uh, free speech. Jonathan, uh, rather th th than sit here and, and cherry pick your survey, if people want to get a feel for candidates' attitudes to free speech, uh, where can they find uh, your report? Where can they access it online? They just go to our website at www.fsu. So that stands for Free Speech Union, FSU. Or just Google and Free Speech is, Union and you'll probably get there, right? Well, that's correct. That is yeah. correct. We, yeah. we also, there, there are, I, I would I would say go to the URL because there are other free speech unions around the world as well. But make sure you get on the on the New Zealand free speech union there and, uh, and you'll see our council candidates report there. Like I said, hundreds and hundreds of candidates responses, 70 pages. You can look at each uh, district there and see those that have taken the time to come back and the comments that they've provided. And one thing I'd say about this, Sean, is, is I, I think... This survey and, and the response that we've had with it shows, it indicates the, 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 the political tenor we have at the moment. This is not the only, we're not the only organisation that has put out a survey like this. In fact, uh, there are organisations that are almost the counter to us, the opposite to us, that have been putting out surveys asking uh, if candidates would block 
uh, people from speaking that 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 were turf allegedly or that would speak against co-governance or that kind of thing. So there are others agitating on the other side, and I think that's what indicates. The, the, the real uh, the, the, the tenor of debate that we have, there are some really critical and divisive questions that we're trying to address at the moment. I think we're seeing that now in this local government election, but it will only become more the case as we get into yeah. the general election. Yeah, and I, I think really we are at a very interesting time in political history. I also just want to emphasise and ask you, and I think you've made it clear in, in the material I've seen, you are not telling people how to vote. Right, you are not saying this is a, therefore a good candidate or a bad candidate. Unlike the mainstream media, which are quite clearly, as I said, reading between the lines, saying if someone's associated with vaccine hesitancy or anything, they're a nutter. Don't vote for them. That's the message they're selling. You are not saying you want to influence the way people vote. You are simply trying to provide some information and context here. Sean, around the council table at the Free Speech Union, we couldn't agree on where to go to lunch, let alone which political candidates we should be endorsing. So the fact of the matter is, we couldn't agree amongst ourselves which candidates are best. There's no way we would try and tell our supporters who they should vote for. We're just trying to... We, we, we trust Kiwi voters. We trust that in the main and on the whole, across our country, Kiwis who are engaged will be able to make a decision that is positive for our future. That's what you have to believe in if you are actually going to trust democracy to work. And, and that doesn't mean we don't get errant candidates at times or sometimes we don't go a little stray. But in the main and on the whole, we have to trust people with the information to make an informed decision. And so that's why we, we, we haven't edited the responses at all. You'll see through the report there are quite a few typos because the candidates themselves had filled it in and, and I guess some of them were rushed in their responses. But we haven't edited this at all. It is it is pure and raw and it is there for you to consider as you go and vote. And that's what we want our supporters to do is go and vote for free speech. Go and vote to be able to maintain this liberty to have a discussion. That's all we're saying. And, and people will, will express themselves differently and what that means. But once we lose the ability to disagree publicly, reasonably, to, to, to potentially be offensive if we need to, then I wonder what sort of democracy we have left. Yep, I absolutely hear you. Hey, can you tell us, Jonathan, who is the free speechiest candidate in the local body elections in New Zealand? You must have one person who was just, oh, man, they get it. <laughs> um, look, the, I, I I don't know. We, we, there are some there are some good candidates out there. Um, I I don't know if I I could put one name to it. Um, in in Rotorua, Reynold McPherson has done a good job. Um, uh, down in Otago Regional Council, Michael Laws is, is a good candidate. Of course so, he um, is. We, of course he is. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll have to uh, get your listeners to send their opinion in on that. Hey, Jonathan, thank you so much for your time this morning. I love your work and the work of the Free Speech Union. Uh, thank you for taking the time to talk about it, uh, it this morning. That is Jonathan Aileen from the Free Speech Union. If you want to look at that report, so they've surveyed all local body candidates, voluntary survey on issues of free speech. Bloody important stuff, people. Excuse my French. Really important stuff. Some people, mostly left, when candidates don't want to engage on this issue, issue. It is such an important issue. Such an important issue. So get onto the Free Speech Union New Zealand website and you can go through and see if your local body candidates are under free speech or not, if they're Nazis, really Nazis, real Nazis.